Today, we're taking a look at Superman number 76, Funeral for a Friend number 4. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Comicadden TV where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Alright, as I said today, we're taking a look at Superman number 76, Funeral for a Friend number 4 from February of 1993. This is a part of the World Without Superman storyline. Uh, you may have seen a couple different versions of this issue. Uh, this one, of course, has Batman throwing, uh, dropping Superman's shredded cape. Uh, there's another issue that shows uh, Captain Marvel there uh, in the same pose that Batman is, dropping Superman's cape. And I think there might even be one of Wonder Woman. I could be wrong, uh, but I think I might have seen one like that. This is the uh, Letters to Superman issue. Uh, every year at Christmas, Superman goes to the local post office and reads his mail. Uh, mail from people who need things. Um, mail from people who just want to tell him what kind of a job he's doing. But mostly it's mail from people who basically look to Superman like a god and send, uh, send him prayers or whatever. This issue is iconic because, okay, number one, uh, the Justice League meet up at the day, on the roof of the Daily Planet, and they decide to go to his mail. Uh, we see the young Mitch Anderson here, who eventually becomes Outburst, the leader of the Superman of America. Uh, if you guys want to know more about him, check out our one of our earliest videos. Uh, way back on the channel, uh, Outburst and the Superman of America. Uh, but we've got Captain Marvel, Batman, the Tim Drake Robin. We've got Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Guy Gardner, Power Girl, and Green Lantern. This is Mitch Anderson here. We see a woman who claims to be Mrs. Superman. Uh, she's just trying to get her 15 minutes of fame or whatever. Uh, Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen. Uh, Jimmy meets up with Mitch and takes him to Bibbo's for some dinner. Uh, while Lois goes back to her apartment and just breaks down when Jonathan and Martha Kent show up along with Lana Lang to uh, kind of comfort her. Uh, and then we get to the post office. They really drew Guy Gardner kind of like an ogre in this issue. Uh, very small forehead, big big face type deal uh, uh, wonder what the the art style for the rest of them is great I love it this of course was back when elongated man still wore the mask and as you can see that's all the letters to Superman for throughout the year uh, one letter in particular was sent the day that Superman died by Mitch Anderson's mom uh, who lost her house during the attack from Doomsday. Uh, that was the house that was uh, destroyed and on fire, and blood wind was basically frozen stiff because he was actually Martian Manhunter. Um, anyway, her, her husband is gone, her son is missing, uh, she has no home and everything, so the Justice League decide to go help uh, while Mitch is talking with Jimmy Olsen and Bibbo. Uh, and he's pouring his heart out to him. Tells him that he always thought that Superman was a bit of a dweeb. Uh, but then he realized that once Superman sacrificed himself for him and his family, he really came around. Uh, once again, Lois, Lana, and the Kents. Wonder Woman goes and tracks down Mitch's dad, Roger Anderson. And lets him know everything that happened with his family. Uh, while uh, Nightwing and Maxima go and uh, help answer some of Superman's letters. Uh, Guy Gardner goes and brings uh, this elderly woman who's on her deathbed, uh, her long lost son who they've lost contact for several years and her dying wish was to be able to uh, see him one more time or whatever. Uh, while Green Lantern and The Flash are helping to rebuild the Anderson's home. Uh, and then Mitch and Jimmy are at the uh, Superman m Memorial. 
and Wonder Woman returns with Mitch's dad. Uh, there's Superman Memorial. And then Cadmus stealing the body of Superman from the memorial. Um, like I said, this was a really iconic issue. Very important issue. I really enjoyed it. This is one that really stuck in my mind for since it first came out. Uh, probably one of my favorites, just to show how important Superman is and how important he is not only to the world, but to the Justice League too. And so in order to honor his memory, they went and answered all his mail. I really enjoyed this issue. If you guys haven't had a chance, check it out, along with the rest of the future f Funeral for a Friend uh, comics. Yeah, I highly recommend picking up this storyline, uh, along with the death of Superman, along with Reign of the Superman, and the return of Superman. If you can't find the individual issues, you can find the graphic novel, or I mean the trade paperbacks, sorry, difference between graphic novel and trade paperback is a graphic novel is something that never really had a single issue. Uh, it was a it's a story that was always meant to be in book form. Uh, trade paperback is a collection of other of comics and into book format. There's trade paperback and trade hardback. Uh, hardback, of course, is hard book, uh, while trade paperback is more of a flimsier book, uh, but they're still about the same price. So anyway, there you have it guys, Funeral for a Friend number 4, Superman number 76 from February of 1993. Uh, like I said, you can find this in regular paperback form. You can also find it in trade paperback in, as part of the World Without Superman title as well as the Funeral for a Friend trade paperback. Uh, two completely separate issues. Uh, Funeral for a Friend contains all of the issues of Funeral for a Friend, while World Without Superman actually does not include Justice League number 70. Anyway, there you have it, guys. I'm Shannon for Comageddon TV. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Keep reading them comics, my friends, and take care.